All right, I've had some water over there heating up. It's just at the boiling point. We're going to add some more water to this. I went ahead and shut the valve off down here where we were running the water into the kettle. As you can see in the kettle, we've got, oh, maybe a couple gallons in there. So we're just going to add this fairly liberally. we got one. I like to count as I do this. Two. change. Uh, that's about four. So there's two more gallons in there. Actually what I think I'm going to do is add all the rest of it. So what we call a batch sparge. Where you add a certain amount of water to the grain. Um, there's other techniques called fly sparging where you Continually add grain or add water to the grain. And try and match the uh, outflow and the inflow, so that you kind of got an evenness in the outflow and inflow. What we're going to do is we're just going to stir this up again. We're going to have to boil off again because we are disturbing that grain bed again. It's pretty compacted down there, so get uh, so we can get some grain up on the top here. Pretty compacted. You're gonna have to put some muscle into this one here. We'll try and get that grain suspended again. Um, we probably should have added a little bit more rice hulls. I only added maybe a quarter of a pound, maybe not even that much. Probably should have went at least a half. Some folks put a whole pound in. I thought that was a little too much. But we had some good drainage here. So we're just gonna stir this up a little bit and we'll come back and boil off again and run the rest of this liquid into the kettle. Okay, we're uh, now out on the back uh, deck here. Looks like we've got just about six gallons of work from that uh, sparge. I got the uh, burner turned up all the way here. We're going to try and get this up and boiling here real soon. And then I'll uh, show you kind of what happens when it starts to boil. Some of the things you have to watch for. Um, then we'll add some hops and let it boil some more, and you know what, that's pretty much it. Uh, after that I'll uh, probably show you how we cool the work down. Alright, we're approaching the boil here. I just turned it down a little bit. We're going to turn it back up a little bit. You can see this foam here is starting to rise. Something typically you see in like pastas and things like that. We're going to start to boil them. You get a little bit of stuff boiling up like that. What's happening is the proteins in the in the wort there are starting to coagulate and get together. And you gotta watch it here so you don't have a big boil over. Um, once it gets boiling, um, we won't have to watch it any longer, and uh, the foam will actually go down a bit. So here, here comes. Just give a little drop of water in there. Regulate the gas. We'll put a little bit more in there because we're about overflowing. There we go. We're going to turn the gas down quite a bit. Once this is done, it uh, won't have any sort of uh, foam on top at all. So um, that's the, the hot break that's happening right now. All right, now we're uh, been boiling about 20 minutes here. I don't know if you can see it. It's starting to get dark, but there's a lot of stuff floating around in the boil. Um, it's time to add some hops. Um, we're going to go for oh, about an 80 minute total boil, but we're going to go ahead and add these hops. These are some Cascade hop pellets. In they go, just like that. you got to watch it here. Again, you may get a little bit of a boil over type action as those hops start to expand in that uh, boiling wort. Looks like we're probably not going to have a problem here today. But that's our first hop addition. We're going to Go about 45 minutes and add some more hops at the 15 minute mark and then finish it off. Alright, we brought the beer off of the boil. We added hops at 15 minutes uh, before, before we stopped. Now we're going to chill the beer. Basically what I got here is two 25 foot coils 
of copper tubing, just standard old household copper tubing. And I've got them connected together with this piece of hose here. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You could run one sink full of ice water and put one of the coils in that ice water, then route the water down through the beer, through the other coil, and then exit um, that into the other sink. Here I'm just going to do both coils at once. We're going to turn on the cold water here. And it's going to leak a little bit, I think, out of the faucet. We've got an adapter on the faucet there that basically changes your hose to changes your uh, faucet to a hose type of adapter. Got a big hose barb on there. I'm just making sure that my water exits into the sink and not onto the floor. And it appears to be doing that. So that's how we chill beer. In about 20 minutes we'll have uh, beer uh, down around 80 degrees. Alright, now we're ready to pitch the yeast. Um, what I've done is cooled that wort down in the kettle and I've siphoned it off into my fermenting chamber here. I'm going to use a plastic bucket. So what we do to pitch the yeast, I have a bottle here of sanitizer. We're just going to spray the outside of the containers. Some folks like to do that. Sometimes I don't do that. We're just going to do it this time for demonstration. So you can see the container for the yeast has swelled quite a bit. We're going to cut the top off here. Let's see if we can get these scissors to work. Release the pressure. It's not going to explode, so don't worry about it if you leave it for a few days. And then uh, what we're going to do is just add that yeast right in there like that. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I've got that mash paddle. I went ahead and sanitized it, cleaned it up real good. We're just going to mix this up a little bit. What we want to do is get that yeast incorporated throughout the mixture here and get some air. We want to get some air into this work. The yeast needs oxygen to properly um, get started. So we'll add some oxygen to the very beginning. And then once we seal the fermenter, um, we won't want to add any oxygen after that. Um, but just to get it going, it needs a little bit of oxygen. So we're going to just stir this up for a little bit. And you know what? That's about it as far as making beer. Next part is the magic where it ferments for about a week. And then uh, from there you uh, siphon it off either into another vessel or into a bottling bucket and bottle it. I'm not going to bottle today, so um, this is going to be the last segment.